The tragic death of a nine-year-old boy who was, police say was kicked to death by his mother has brought renewed attention to the Children, Youth, and Families Department. The boy revealed the abuse to school officials a year before his death has been reported, yet CYFD officials did not have an open file on the case at the time of his death. And CYFD has struggled with staff shortages and the governor's budget earmarks an additional 600,000 to hire more investigators. But lawmakers are questioning why CYFD did not spend more than $6 million last year Returning it to the general fund, and Tom, one court-appointed special advocate told KOB-TV if, if the reporting this week that the agency's management structure is punitive, hostile, and, and that's, those are two very tough words to use about a culture of an organization. So my question, is this a culture problem? Is this a numbers problem, the number of people? Is it a combination of both? How do, how do we look at CYFD and figure out where we go forward as a path? Well, you know, I think you know, one of the options is just mm -hmm. you you start from scratch mm -hmm. or you make amendments to the existing organization. What would scratch look like for you? What uh, would that look like? Well, I, I think you, at that point, it looks like two to three years down the road is okay. what it looks like because then you'd have to benchmark what are other states doing, who's doing it well, what gotcha. does success look like, you know, and then the service mm -hmm. uh, as well, the integration with all these different law enforcement, education, uh -huh. uh, family service groups. Right. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a very easy, quick fix. I think uh, there are a number of previous secretaries in that office who can testify That's that, right. you know, this is a messed up organization That's and because right. you're dealing with messed up situations, really bad situations. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think uh, Senator Ortiz Pino uh, actually raised some very good issues uh, in a news release that, that was issued, um, uh, I think, yesterday or day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's just as far as, you know, hey, let's spend the money that is made available before right. we start talking about, you know, adding more stuff in because it's either, you know, not enough money mm -hmm. or um, not enough authority. Right. And the not enough authority coming from the governor's office just doesn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the same governor's office who went in and basically orchestrated a raid against a boys' camp. Um, and why all of a sudden does the administration have enough authority there but not enough authority here? Mm. It's a very sad and tragic situation. It's a very know. interesting question. Uh, so hopefully, you know, during the legislative session as yeah. appropriations are discussed, um, you know, feet will be held to the fire as mm -hmm. they always do, but hopefully additional, more difficult questions will be asked of CYFD sure. to say how exactly are you going to use this? What is your plan to bring on more investigators? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the 120 vacancies right now, you know, that's a lot of vacancies. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. this, this is unfortunately one of those cases that filled through the cracks. Who's responsible? I don't think anybody, you mm -hmm. know, is, is really stepping up right now to say, you know, we're the responsible party. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully through this process, we'll be able to identify next steps to make sure it doesn't happen again. Absolutely. Yeah, good stuff there. Diane, quick gut reaction I'm looking for here. The governor wants 600000 in appropriation to hire more CYFD folks. Does that number do something for you? Is that just your gut reaction? My, okay, my mm -hmm. gut reaction is, I, from what I've read, she's asking for inspectors yeah. and oversight people. Um, so much funding comes into CYFD that is federal money mm -hmm. that has different strings on it, and you can't mix the pots. Mm -hmm. That's just like everybody keeps complaining about the $6 million. Right. Well, every appropriations bill, or at least 99.9% .9 of them, say at the end of the fiscal year, any unexpended monies mm -hmm. are returned to the general fund mm -hmm. or to the federal government. Mm -hmm. So we, I would like to see more what was not spent where. And if this, the request she's making, is for increased oversight people or investigators, mm -hmm. then I think it's a very good use of the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it is it enough? Meaning, you know, we we need do we need a buffer for? I think you know we know what doesn't work for the right. numbers. But I think you know? for the first year, yeah. think about how. First of all, you can't hire Joe Blow off the street. Gotcha. To be an investigator, it has to be someone who's qualified. You have to do in-depth background screening on these people. Mm -hmm. You have all kinds of research. It's not a somebody applies on Monday and you hire them, they're on board on Friday. Right. It takes three to six months wow. to get a person hired. So for this first year, fiscal year, a 600,000 request seems appropriate okay. to me. Then look at it and see how many we can get because it really is the investigation and oversight piece that's missing, right. in my opinion. That's right. Sophie, would you agree with that? That feels like the best way to start that oversight Part. I think one of the challenges here, um, and when we just talk about money or we just talk about you know hiring more staff members, mm -hmm. is that we're not getting at some of the root issues here. You know, mm -hmm. one of the real challenges 
uh, too often, and this is under multiple administrations, this is not just under the Governor Martinez administration, mm -hmm. is that there is a drive to get kids back into the home. That's right. Outcomes in general are better when children are in their homes, but not when the home is not safe. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't have the investigative capacity to ensure that the kids are going back into safe homes, and, and at the same time, we don't have enough foster homes, so that if the home isn't safe, there's a good place for those kids to go. We've left them in a position in which well, we're going to put you back into the home because we're going to cross our fingers that that's a better place for you, mm -hmm. and it may not be. And that is a really difficult place to put our kids. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that this is, um, going to Tom's point, this is a top-to-bottom problem. Also to the KOB report, mm -hmm. this is not the first time that we've heard that management and CYFD is punitive. They're punitive toward their own staff. Right. They're punitive toward foster parents. Mm -hmm. They're punitive toward, uh, unfortunately, toward the kids themselves. I mean, there's, it's a real challenge. And every, everyone's with that caught up community. in this, isn't it? Seems to me, right? It, you know, it, those behavior issues or, or kept in yeah. culture for a while. That's true. This is yeah. not your top management, right. Specifically, most of the staff has been employed for a number of years through different administrations. Right. Interesting. You know, Javier, you have kids. I have kids. You know, we hear about these things. I would not want to be one of these inspectors having to make a call that this kid needs to get out of the house. That's a very tough position to be in. So it seems to me there's a bit of a systems problem here. Mm -hmm. Somehow you have to have a, a vastly different system to look at each situation and make these kind of determinations. Does that make sense in yeah. your gut? It just something seems off here. I, I, I agree. I think you have to yeah. take a global look at it. Um, like Tom was saying, I mean, this is a situation, um, it's little wonder that we're 50th in child well-being rankings. Mm -hmm. um, we are, this is our basic function of our state government to uh, watch over uh, and safeguard the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. innocent children. And we've just, um, I'll mention Omarie, we let, we let him down. You know, he called, he made that call, and we weren't there for him. Um, and it's, uh, you know, as you begin to peel away the rhetoric about, um, you know, smaller government, uh, less government being the answer, um, you start to realize that these are the on-the-ground impacts of, uh, 159 vacancies uh, mm -hmm. sitting vacant, um, and it's a stark uh, contradiction from, you know, the image that we're presented with of the governor uh, reading to kids in, in classrooms, um, and so we've we've got our work cut out for us mm -hmm. uh, on this topic. Is this is it possible to fix CYFD's issues without looking at this whole situation holistically? Meaning, if you don't have drug and alcohol rehab money available, if you don't have other family dynamics that creates family cohesion. It seems to me any one individual at CYFD is up against something that's basically impossible mm -hmm. without all that other stuff being a holistic approach to fixing families. Would you yeah. agree with that too? I've and thought a lot about that. I mean, yeah. it really is. Uh, we've got some significant poverty we're up sure. against. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about this at the legislative session is just how do we begin to wrap our uh, kids with um, a lot more support so they can thrive. That's right. I mean, it's, a, it's really a, that's right. a question. Or we can have more CIFD people chasing the problem instead of fixing the problem on the front end. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to make a decision in our state about that, so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. In a moment, we're back with two state senators to talk about the upcoming legislative session.